Welcome back. Before we can discuss a surgical procedure, which is a direct therapeutic option of a certain condition, we need to discuss that pathology first so you will know the premise of the surgery. With that, we will briefly discuss the pathology of gastric dilatation and volvulus. Let's begin. So, what is GDV? GDV can also be called bloat. This is the over-distension of the stomach with either gas or fluid or ingesta or all of those combined with the rotation of the stomach on its mesenteric axis. So if you're looking at the patient from behind, the direction of the twisting is clockwise. How does this syndrome happen? Well, it is regarded to have a multifactorial etiology. I have posted a reading assignment about the details of GDV, which I will not be able to discuss in this lecture because discussing GDV could actually take you a full day. So I've included that reading assignment for you to read. For now, let's use these series of images. We start with a normally positioned stomach. Usually when a patient eats or drinks, the stomach physiologically distends. When the sensory receptors in, uh, on the stomach wall detects that there is food in the oral cavity, it physiologically would distend to prepare for the entry of food. Now, the abnormal part comes in when they eat or drink in large amounts in a very short period of time. That's one um, pinpointed cause of GDV. The stomach distends beyond uh, beyond its normal proportions. This is what we call gastric dilatation. At some point, this distended stomach will start to twist along its longitudinal axis. The twisting is what we call the volvulus. It will then bring the pylorus upwards, as seen here, and cause it to shift to the right of the midline. Gas distension or the accumulation of gas within the stomach can happen before or after the twisting. What's important is once the twisting is greater than 180 degrees, the esophagus will twist and close off. At this point, the animal will not be able to relieve the distension through uh, belching or vomiting. Along with this, the shift on the anatomical orientation of the stomach will cause the, um, the pylorus to not let anything from the stomach flow into it and empty into the duodenum. So that outflow is also cut off. Now with this twisting that's happening, the vessels around here can also, um, what do we call this? thrombose and twist, depriving the stomach of its blood flow. These vessels can also get torn if the stomach becomes so big. And when these short gastric vessels are torn or avulsed, they uh, could lead to internal abdominal hemorrhage or what we call a hemoabdomen. The massive distension of the stomach will also put direct pressure on the caudal vena cava, and the portal vein, which will markedly decrease the cardiac output, leading to hypotension and hypovolemic shock. So when there is direct pressure on the caudal vena cava and the portal vein, there is decreased blood flow to the heart. So the heart cannot fill its normal um, cardiac output. When it has a decreased cardiac output, it will have a decreased blood flow to everything that the heart supplies. So that will be the brain, the kidney, the pancreas, the gastric mucosa, the small intestine. That is why the fatality rate for this syndrome is found to be at 15 to 20 percent. Or to put it in another way, one in five dogs who suffer from GDV die from it. Some patients um, we're also found to swallow air during breathing. These, uh, this condition is actually seen in those brachycephalic dogs, which undergo 
brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, wherein the epiglottis is not working properly. That's why when the animal breathes fast, um, some of the air actually goes into the esophagus, not to the trachea. So that could also happen. Uh, that, that could also lead to um, gas accumulation in the stomach. And also, um, the hepatogastric and hepatoduodenal ligament, which holds the stomach in its position, is sometimes, la is, is sometimes laxed or weak. These ligaments are weak. And it has also been pointed out to allow uh, more gastric mobility than uh, normal. Looking at the statistics for GDV incidence, large and giant breed dogs are found to be predisposed to this syndrome. Dogs which are deep chested are also found to suffer from GDV more so than narrow chested dogs. Examples are uh, Weimaraners, uh, sorry, German Shepherds, Siberian Huskies, Alaskan Malamutes, Rottweilers, and Akitas, as seen in these pictures. Can you think of other dog breeds that could be predisposed? According to that, um, large and giant breed dogs. Uh, one breed would be Great Dane, yes, St. Bernard, Bloodhounds. They're also um, to be at high risk of developing GDV. The Great Dane in particular has an incidence rate of 42% in their eight year long lifespan. Also, mixed breed dogs with the same body size and conformation um, or with deep chests are also predisposed. There is an existing argument in the research industry as to the heritability of the risk of developing GDV. Some researchers have found that the first order relative of a dog has a marked, uh, marked increased likelihood of developing GDV. This means that the progeny of an animal who suffered from GDV is at an increased risk. And this is where they also um, incorporated the finding that the ligaments holding the stomach in its position are weak because it could also be inherited. One question that I will pose to you is, can GDV also happen in smaller dog breeds or even in cats? Do you think? Yes, they are uh, occasionally affected, but it is quite rare. One study actually found that ductions appear to be at increased risk, even if they are um, small breeds. Clinical signs would reflect gastric dilatation, circulatory compromise, and respiratory compromise, and would depend on the duration and severity of the condition as well. One early sign is retching without vomiting or unproductive vomiting because the esophagus is starting to twist, so nothing could come out of that. The most evident sign is acute abdominal distension which is combined with acute lethargy. A dog can be happily walking with its owner, goes home, drinks a lot of water, and then just falls to its side. Honestly, that's how it happens most of the time. These animals are well cared for. They're, they have a good um, record of going to the veterinarian, but then GDV just happens. One note is that giant breed dogs may not show the classic abdominal distension since a, di a dilated stomach may remain within the dog's ribcage because it's so big. Um, this uh, clinical signs are usually followed by shock signs such as tachycardia, tachypnea, low systolic blood pressure, prolonged TRT, pale and dry mucous membranes, and poor pulse quality. Emphasis on pulse quality, not pulse rate. Pulse quality is how resistant an artery is when you try to collapse it. Try to feel for your pulse on the artery on the medial aspect of your wrist. A strong pulse would mean a very good cardiac output and peripheral circulation, and it would be easily felt by your fingers. Now, what do we need to do to manage this syndrome? First, 
you need to establish if the stomach is massively distended or if it is distended and twisted. Gastric dilatation can easily be fixed by non-invasive decompression techniques, while twisting is an emergency condition which needs immediate surgical treatment. Once you have identified it, you need to restore and support circulation, which has been impeded by the volvulus. Remember, this condition is very critical and dangerous because it cuts off blood flow, not just to the stomach wall, but also to the heart, meaning to the rest of the body. This is why you need to restore the circulation. And how do we do that? Fluid therapy. But fluid therapy is a band-aid solution. Circulation is ultimately restored by decompressing the distended stomach. This is done concurrently with administering fluid boluses. Um, personal point, when a GDV comes into your clinic, it's a critical patient needing emergent care. When I was working abroad as, a, as an emergency veterinary technician, I see this case at least three times a week. And everything stops when a dog comes in with GDV or a suspected GDV. We stop consults. We close the emergency service to put all our efforts on one patient. That's how critical it is. You need all hands on deck. The doctor will be decompressing. I will be putting two large bore IVs on its arms, pushing two liters of fluid in just 15 minutes. So that's just giving you a picture of how an emer a veterinary emergency team works when this case comes in. Once this is done, the twisted stomach must be surgically corrected as soon as possible. But how do we know that a stomach is twisted? With an abdominal x-ray. So let's review again on the radiographic anatomy of the abdomen. I think by this time, you are studying this right now. Um, this is the normal position of the abdominal organs. The stomach is seen with a moderate gastric dilatation with its lumen clearly full of gas. The pylorus is still on the ventral aspect, which means no twisting has occurred. It's just the stomach is distended. Also, if you notice, this patient has a lot of foreign bodies. From what I see, these look like staple wires. <laughs> now, what does a GDV look like? A lateral abdominal radiograph is taken while the dog is in right lateral recumbent um, position. GDV would look like a large, dilated, gas-filled gastric shadow right here with the pyloric part shifted upwards. This has been called a reversed uh, letter C or C shape. Popeye's arm, I think you could visualize that with Popeye flexing. Um, if you know the Smurfs, it has been called the Smurfs hat as well. Some have also called this the boxing glove and the double bubble. The double bubble would be for the stomach, mainly the stomach body and the pylorus. So, is this dog suffering from gastric dilatation or gastric dilatation and volvulus? GD or GDV? What do you think? Pretty hallmark sign, right? Yep, that is a GDV. How about this one? Well, the pylorus is actually pointed by the arrows already. Yes, it is a GDV as well. Very classic sign. You have a very distended stomach with a pylorus shifted upwards. How about this one? Can you identify where everything is? Yes, this is the stomach. But is it twisted though? Actually, no. This is only a case of gastric dilatation. A part of the pylorus is seen here. This, however, is actually a part of... What organ is this? Radio. Is this the liver or the spleen? I'm not gonna say. Review in your radio. <laughs> Lastly, 
How about this? Yep. This is a GDV. So what do we do after diagnosing this? We want to restore circulation. We give fluid therapy. And we want to decompress the stomach. Let's find out the ways to do that in our next lecture video.